Welcome stampers to Sunday Share. I'm Tracy at For the Love of Stamping and today for you I have these adorable 3D Easter baskets. I'm going to show you how to make them and how easy they are. So for the, our project today we're going to use the little Easter bunny and in order to make this I'm going to show you all the supplies that you need. So let's start off with cardstock. You're going to require a piece of 6x6 crumb cake cardstock, which we're going to do some scoring on, and I'll show you all of that. Then you'll need another strip that's a half inch by six inches, which will become the basket handle. You'll need a piece that's a half inch by three or four inches that you're going to use to stamp the greeting on. And then you'll need a piece of granny apple green that we'll use to cut out the cattails that are going to go behind the rabbit. So let's have a look at some of the other supplies. So the stamp set that we, I'm using here is called Welcome Easter. And even though it says it's an Easter stamp set, um, it can be used for a lot more than just Easter. So you can use it for a baby card, you can use it to give out a friendship card, and you can use it not just on cards, but obviously on projects like we're gonna do today on this basket. The basket itself, after I've done all the scoring and the cutting, has been then run through the Big Shot with the Absolute Argyle 3D embossing folder. This is available in the mini catalog until June and is a great embossing folder. Definitely one that you should get. Also, in order to create the uh, grass behind the rabbit, I have used the Friendly Silhouette dies and we're going to use the one with the cattails in it. But there are three other or two other horizon type um, dies as well as some dragonflies. Coloring of our rabbit, our little Easter bunny is going to be done with the crumb cake uh, in the light stamp and blends. I'm going to do the inside of his ears and his feet and the nose with flirty flamingo and I will then take my color lifter over top to uh, lighten the pink or to soften it. And then to color the ribbon that you see on here, this is our crinkle ribbon. It's a seam binding ribbon, also available in the mini catalog, which is good until June. We're going to take a Highland Heather stamp and blend in the dark, and we're gonna color it to create, to change the color of the ribbon. These markers are fantastic for that. You can take this ribbon and make it any color you want with a stamp and blend marker. All right, let's get started. I will show you the scoring and the cutting first of all, and then we will move on to the rest of the project. So I'll bring in my stamp and trimmer, and I'm going to score at two inches and four inches along the six inch side. So I'll put it in at the four inch, and I will score at four, and then move it in and score at two. Make sure you can see what I'm doing here. <laughs> score it at two inches. And then I will rotate this and I will score it again at four inches and two inches. And that's all the scoring that you need to do on this piece. So we'll move the trimmer aside and we'll take some scissors and we need to be able to form this into a basket. So we're gonna cut along the two and the four inch uh, score lines up to the two inch that you see above. So I'll just line up my scissors and snip up. Same on this side, just lying into the groove of the score line. Give it another little trim right to the edge. And then I will do the same on the opposite side, cutting it right up to the score line. And then once again, up to the score line. Now, what this does is it, once you've folded your score lines, you will see that you can turn it into the basket shape. So to, sh to sort of soften the edges of the, of the corners here, I'm just gonna take a corner rounder. This is one of our old whale tail styles, but it was one that I had. And I'm just going to round the two corners on each flap, like so. And I'll rotate it and do the same on the other side. Last corner. All right, I'm gonna get all those out of the way. 
Then I'll take this piece and I'm gonna run it through the embossing folder, through the Big Shot with the 3D Argyle embossing folder. And when I've done that, it will come out like so. And I've done this ahead of time just to save a little bit of time. So that's how it turns out. And at the same time, I took the half inch by six inch for the handle and ran it through the Big Shot as well. So we'll take some adhesive and we will fold in the corners. So let's just make sure our score lines are nicely burnished. And it just makes it easier to adhere together. And I'm gonna to use Tombow glue to adhere these together. So I wanna put some Tombow on the inside edges of these corners. So I'll take that, put some there. And I'll fold that in like so. And then I'll take a little bit more Tombow and I'll fold it in like that. Okay, so what you'd wanna do, because we have Tombow, we can move it a little bit. Uh, you wanna make sure that you cover that top edge and you wanna make sure that this is relatively symmetrical. Okay, all right, so I'll finish off this as well. Putting a little bit of Tombow on the corner. I'm folding these down so that that top edge is hidden and we are nice and symmetrical here. Okay, Tombow is great. It adheres quickly and allows you the ability to, you know, move things around a little bit. So now I need to put the handle in and I'm going to put some adhesive on both sides of my strip of cardstock and I'm going to tuck that right down inside between the flaps and the in ed inside edge. And I wanted to line it up so that it's right into the center. I'll fold, I'll rotate this around and I will do the same. I'll put some Tombow on the front side and the back side of the handle. And I will take it and I'll tuck it right down inside and I'll hold it until it's stuck. All right. Super easy so far, right? Okay, so that's our basket. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the piece that I had run through the Big Shot with the Friendly Dyes and the Granny Apple Green, and we're gonna adhere that to the front side of the basket. Now, when you're running this through, I wanted to make sure that when you put it through the Big Shot that you take the die and you line it up so that you give yourself a bit of an edge. If you were to line this right up along the edge of the die on the cardstock, when you run it through the Big Shot and try to adhere to the front, you don't leave yourself any anything to grip with. So move it up about a quarter of an inch, run it through the Big Shot, and this is what you'll end up with. So what I'll do is now I'm gonna take some more Tombow, I'm gonna put it on the back side of this, um, of the grass or cattails, and again, using Tombow, I can come up a little bit into those reeds. I can move this around once I stick it onto the front of the basket if I didn't get it centered when I started. And so I'll take that and I'll just adhere it right along the bottom edge. And the good thing with Tombow is not only does it allow you to move this around until you get it even, but it'll dry clear. So any bits of Tombow that you see in the background will be clear once it's dried. So I'll line my scissors along the crease of the basket and just trim that away. Okay, maybe I'll take just a smidge more off. And I can always come back in and add more Tombow after. And I'll do the same on the other side, trimming away the excess and keeping it in line with the fold of the edge of the basket. All right, so that completes that piece of it. Now we can move on to the coloring of the rabbit. So the little bunny, just the cutest little thing, we're gonna color him with our blends. And I'm gonna take a piece of paper and just lay it down because I find what happens is that these ink, um, blends will bleed through and I didn't wanna um, have it bleed through the to the base here. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit to show you a little bit better. We'll start with the crumb cake and I'm gonna color inward. So I start on his head and I bring that the marker inwards like so. And I'll do the same on the other side. And these blends are fantastic because they allow you to add, add extra ink to it or just to fill in the spaces without it causing any lines or any uh, streaks across the, 
the front of your, or uh, across the surface. So I'm just gonna leave his muzzle uh, white, and then I'm gonna take a little bit of the blends down both the arms, or then the paws in the front of the bunny, and down the side of his legs, the hunches, hunches, <laughs> and then his toes, and then the same on the other side. Blends markers are alcohol-based, um, which, which I'm, allows you to do your coloring and allows you to get a streak-free image. And if you find that you wanted to make some of the areas a little bit darker, like I will here on the haunches, you just have to come back over with the blends marker and you can see how it gives you just a little bit extra depth to, the, um, to those sections and to his little toes. So now I'll take the light flirty flamingo and I'm going to color the inside of his ears and the pads of his feet and I just realized that I hadn't finished his ears so let's take the marker and just color around the edge of his ears with the light flirty flamingo or sorry the light crumb cake marker like that okay now he's finished. Now let's do the inside of his ears. I find uh, even though this is the light flirty flamingo, it's a little bit too pink for my liking and I wanna lighten it, so that's where the color lifter comes into play. We can use the color lifter to pull some of that ink out and soften the pink, like so. And you'll see that as that dries, it'll lighten even more. I'm gonna repeat this same thing on the pads of his feet. So I'll color with the light flirty flamingo. And then I will come in with a color lifter and I will pull some of that pink out. So in with a color lifter and it's just a matter of just rubbing it right over the surface like that. And see how it's lightening there? It's so fantastic. Same on this side, just to make it look a little softer, okay? And you can see how it's already pulled the color out and softened that look. Now we will do a touch of ink on his nose and I'm gonna leave that in the full pink. There we go. Okay, so now all we need are some dimensionals and we're gonna adhere the rabbit to the front of the basket with dimensionals. So I'll take some dimensionals that I have here and I will just put them on the back of the bunny I'll put one on his head and I'll put uh, one down on his body. I like to give it enough lift and then I'll put one on each foot. So I don't like to waste the dimensionals. I use every little bit. So I'm just gonna cut a few of these so that I can put them on his feet. So one there, one there. And maybe I'll put one on his ear as well. Okay. Alrighty, now I'll just remove the backing and I'll put that right onto the front of the basket. Okay. Okay. And we'll just center him right into the middle. Oh, isn't he cute? It's coming together so quickly. All we have now is we're gonna put the greeting on and we're gonna do our bows. So let me show you this beautiful crinkle ribbon. Um, we're gonna take, I have all these old acrylic cutting pads. I don't have the heart to throw them out, but they're pretty useless at this point when they get that bent. So I just use them to cover a surface. I'll take a little piece of paper and I'll grab the seam binding crinkle ribbon and I will take a stamp and blends marker and using the Dark Highland Heather, we're gonna just use the edge of the marker and not the tip. You use the tip and you'll break the nib. So we just do this and we run it right along the edge of the, uh, right along the surface of the ribbon and that will give us color. And you can do this with any marker. Uh, all the Stampin' Blends will, you know, give you a variety of, of colors, which is nice because then you only need to buy one color and change it however you wish. Now that's going to dry lighter as we, uh, as you can see, I had done one ahead of time and you see once it's dry, it definitely lightens. So that's what we're going to use to tie the bow. So I'll move that aside and now bring back our bunny basket and 
I'm gonna turn it this way. I know it's upside down, but that's okay because it, for some reason, when I tie my bows, my ribbons tend to stick upwards and I want the ribbon ends or the tails and I want them to stick downwards. <laughs> Now I have stampers who don't like tying bows and, and I graciously do it for them. I like tying bows. I think it stems back to when I was in Girl Guides or Brownies and I tended, you know, we had to tie knots and all that kind of stuff. So I don't mind doing it. So I'll tie a bow right across the front here and then I will shrink the edges down by just pulling on the ribbons. Okay, so we'll just make it a little smaller and then I'll trim the edges off with my scissors. I'll use my paper snips. <laughs> Funny story, I had bought some paper snips, you know, way back when I started as a demonstrator and they started to dull over time. So I took a, what I thought was sharpeners for scissors and uh, well, let's just say I had to buy new, new paper snips because well, I couldn't even cut paper with them after I had used the, uh, <laughs> the the uh, sharpener on them. Not too smart, but hey, you know, things happen. We learn our lesson and I won't do that again. I'm also going to put a little bow on his ear and I had made a tiny one. Again, something that my, my stampers don't like doing, but I'd like to do. So I made one ahead of time. I stuck it on with a glue dot. I'm just gonna adhere that to the ear of the bunny like that. Okay, and we'll pull it aside so you can see his face. Okay, almost done. Now all I have left to do is to stamp the greeting. So I have my half inch by, I don't know, four inches or so, and I'm gonna use Gorgeous Grape as the uh, ink. And we're going to ink up the stamp that says, have a wonderful Easter. And you can see I, I didn't put the, the sticker on the back. I was a little lazy, so <laughs> we're gonna take our chances that I get this straight. So I'll ink it up with the uh, Gorgeous Grape ink. And I'll line up my cardstock and I will stamp that directly into the center. Fingers crossed. Hey, not so bad. That was pretty good actually. I, some days are better than others. <laughs> so I'm gonna now take my paper snips once again and I'm going to flag the ends of this to uh, just create like a banner edge. So I'll trim the edge a little bit and I like to come in from the end and that way you can start in the center and you're going to get a much more even um, flag than you would have you if you were just to try to freehand it the other way. So I start in the center and I cut in and then I come to the from the points and I cut in from there and you can see how much nicer that that works out. Then I'll trim the edge of this one off, try to make it as even as I can. And then doing the same, I can line up the scissors so that the point is lined up where the uh, end of the flag is, and then uh, trim up from the end and from the points inwards. And like so, voila. All right, so now we're going to take uh, probably some glue dots and we'll just adhere it to the side of the basket. And maybe I'll use some snail instead since it's handy. <laughs> we'll just place that right there. And there we go. Our little basket is finished. See how easy that was? Done in under 20 minutes. I hope you enjoyed my little stamping project. Uh, enjoy your Easter and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.